Hey guys, Rick Stone here from Stony Acres Gardening. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of my winter garden. Now we live in zone 6B just south of Salt Lake City, Utah. So we have a, a relatively cold winter, obviously not as cold of a lot, as a lot of you that live in, you know, zones 3 and 4, but we do have a pretty decent uh, cold winter. It is mid-December right now and we are enjoying a lot of crops from our garden this year in the wintertime. So this is probably an average winter garden for me. It's not my best winter garden. We're missing an entire cold frame full of spinach. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's a decent year. We've had a pretty good year so far. We've got a lot of crops that we're going to be able to eat kind of all through the winter, and so we're pretty excited about it. So first thing I want to start out is showing you our cold frames. So this year we have two cold frames full of crops, and then we also have three hoop houses uh, with crops in them. So this first cold frame is actually mostly lettuce. We do have a little bit of tot soy in it as well. I'm going to show you the lettuce and I'm actually, we need to harvest some. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a head of lettuce for you. So this variety of lettuce is called Nevada. Uh, it's a summer crisp lettuce that actually does really well in the winter as well. And uh, it holds up really well. You can see this head is just beautiful, uh, really nice, looking great. We planted these indoors under our seed starting lights on August 1st. Then we transplanted them out into the garden on September 15th, right around there. We didn't actually start harvesting from this bed until middle to late October, and uh, we still got a lot. We, we started out with about 30 heads of lettuce in here. We've actually still got about 18 or 20 heads in this bed, uh, but things are coming along and, and, and doing well. Now, the one thing you have to watch out for with lettuce, and this is going to bite us this year because we've got so much of it, is lettuce does not hold up to the really cold temperatures. So we've had a pretty mild fall so far and into this early part of the winter. We've had a little bit of snow, not a ton, two or three inches here and there, and um, not a lot of really cold temperatures. We've been down into the teens Fahrenheit a few times but most of our nights have still been kind of floating in those low 20s, low to mid 20s at night. And so our lettuce is holding up really well, but sometimes when it gets really cold, lettuce doesn't hold up. And so as we move into January, these lettuce plants are actually gonna to start to die off on us because it's just gonna to be too cold at night. So we're gonna hurry, try and harvest and eat as much of this as we possibly can over the next two or three weeks so that we can, uh, you know, make sure that we keep this and, and actually get to use it. So again, the, the variety here is Nevada and one that we really love. Now, let me take you over here and I'll kind of do a cutaway. Uh, we've also got some tot soy in here. Tot soy is an Asian green. It is related to both bok choy and pak choy. Uh, a little bit different than those though. It's kind of more of a rosette. It doesn't uh, kind of create that long stocky you know, kind of clump of leaves instead of some more of a rosette like a spinach. It actually uh, is very, very hardy. And so we haven't started harvesting that yet because that can be something that we can harvest in January or February when we're, you know, done with the lettuce and things are really kind of uh, slim uh, in the garden. So the tot soy will actually be fine here in the cold frames all winter long. It would last all through the winter. We'll harvest it pretty heavy starting the first part of January once this lettuce is done. So that is cold frame number one. Let's head over to the second cold frame. So this is cold frame number two and it is our root crop cold frame. So for the most part it's full of carrots. Now I did get these guys planted a little bit late this year. We were doing an experiment in this bed with some cover crops. Normally I would try to get these planted about the 1st of August. We didn't get them in until about the 20th of August. So they were a little bit behind which means we're not harvesting from them yet. They're gonna need a little bit more growth and growth this time of the year is very, very slow. So we probably won't be harvesting carrots out of this bed until middle of February uh, is when these should start to really size up. I, I kind of tested a few out and we do have carrots, but they're all still kind of, you know, pencil size or maybe just a little bit bigger than that. Uh, so the carrots will actually hang out for a little bit longer and we won't do much with them. But we do have radishes that are uh, actually kind of getting to the point to where we need to get them out. So this is a watermelon radish that we planted here. And uh, these guys went in about the same time, August 20th and um, looking really nice. Again, everything this time of year grows a lot slower. That's why, you know, normally 
radishes are done in 35, 40 days, but these take a little bit longer this time of year. But uh, really nice, still holding up well in the cold frames, and so we've got some radishes to put on our salads as well to go with that lettuce that we just harvested. Now let me take you over and I'll show you the hoop houses. This one's kind of fun because it's an experiment that we're doing this year. This is the first time that we have tried to overwinter beets. So these beets didn't get planted until about mid-September. So they had no chance of being ready this time of year. They, that, that By then there's not enough sunlight. And so we have just some little beets that are starting to grow. And so is what we're gonna do in this hoop house is as it starts to get colder, we're gonna throw an extra layer of protection over it and we're going to overwinter these beets with the hope that we will be able to harvest full grown beets in you know mid-February, maybe mid-March, somewhere in that time frame is what we're hoping for. So kind of just an experiment in this bed, something that we uh, kind of threw together at the last minute. I had some beet starts that I was trying for another experiment and uh, so we put these guys in, kind of just threw up this temporary hoop house. We'll see how it does. Uh, so I'll keep you informed on this. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to it because the plants are doing pretty well so far. So I'm hoping that they're gonna make it through the winter and we'll have a good harvest in the spring. All right, so this is hoop house number two and these guys are on hinges. So they're a little bit easier for us to access. Um, in this hoop house, we don't have a lot going on right now. We've got these kale plants, which have actually been here for a long time. So these were planted in uh, the middle of July and uh, have we've been harvesting from them and, and have been using them for a long time, uh, quite quite a while. And they're about done. They are kind of succumbing to the, to the cold temperatures finally. Part of that is because they're up against, they're so tall, they're up against the top of this hoop. And so they're getting frozen against that. But still doing well. We're still harvesting from, from here about once a week. Uh, back behind here, and I'll do a close up so you guys can see, is some planting for the spring. So we put transplants in here uh, is what you're looking at is we've got some spinach. There's about a, a dozen and a half spinach plants here and then about the same amount of mosh which is also sometimes called corn salad. These were planted by transplant uh, about the first of October and so they've been in for not quite six weeks yet. This time of year they don't do very much. They kind of just sit and uh, is what will happen is these will be protected by the hoop house over the winter and then they will take off in early early spring so we'll start to see a good surge of growth on these probably about the middle of february as the sun starts to come back a little bit and uh, they will take off and give us a good greens harvest really early i would expect that we'll be harvesting from these by the middle of march uh, so, which is awesome, earlier than we ever get greens if we were to plant them in the spring. So that's hoop house number two. All right, and then this is our third hoop house and uh, it is full of kale. I often get a lot of grief for growing this much kale from people, but we actually like kale quite a bit. Didn't used to, my tastes have changed. And if you've never had winter grown kale that has been in a hoop house like this and gets frozen and thawed and frozen and thawed, it's actually a completely different vegetable. It tastes so much better uh, this time of year. It's sweeter because the starches get converted into sugars and it is just uh, way better. Best kale that you're gonna have. So it's nice and tender. We have a lot of it because this is going to take us all the way through the winter. So here at the back, is uh, Vates kale. We've got kind of a mix of some Lassiano and some other Vates up here in the front. These were planted in mid-July. These were planted in early to mid-September. And so that's why you see the, the size difference between them. These will be our spring harvest. These will harvest all winter long and we have actually started harvesting. It doesn't look like it because there's so much of it, but we actually have started eating this and uh, we will harvest this hard all through the winter and then this will be our early spring harvest. So that is uh, kale. And again, it is really good this time of year compared to regular kale. I, I, I know a lot of people don't like kale, but if you want some good, yummy, sweet tasting kale, this is the time of year to grow it. All right, so that is my winter garden. 
like I say, this is a, a kind of an average year for us. It's not spectacular. We're missing spinach. Normally we would have a big bed of spinach and we had really, really hot weather in August and just didn't get the spinach to germinate. It just wouldn't come up. This is the second year in a row we've been without spinach this time of year. So, uh, but beyond that, we're pretty happy uh, with everything. Everything is looking really good and really nice. The hoop houses and the cold frames are, are doing their best and, and uh, keeping things protected. So we're super excited for a winter of harvesting lots of yummy food for us here in the garden. If you would like to learn a little bit more about how to grow a winter garden like this, um, I actually have a free mini course that you can sign up for. It's called the Year Round Gardening Mini Course. There's a link in the description of this video that you can click on. You can go check that out. Uh, it teaches you a little bit more about when you should actually be planting and timing these and what kind of protection you need to be offering depending on where you live. Because if you live in the colder areas, War Zone 6B, colder areas are gonna need more protection. And so uh, you definitely want to check that mini course out to uh, learn a little bit more about that. All right, that my friends is all I have for you for this week. Please make sure you get subscribed. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and we will talk to you next week. Happy gardening.